All right, here we go, folks. Joe Tessitore ringside with Tim Bradley and Andre Ward. Edgar Berlanga has not had a fight that has lasted more than two minutes and 45 seconds. Tim Bradley, does Sierra get him into the second round? I don't see it. You know, Sierra said he's not going to come out. He's going to be aggressive. And he's going to keep Berlanga out at bay. Well, there's a thought. Yeah, and did you see the response from... Sierra. He is so heavy handed. You hear that thud when Berlanga punches. Not back here. Not back. Yeah, the power is real, Joe, but I'm going to say this gets beyond the first round. Remember, Sierra's never been stopped. He's looking for that right hand as Berlanga. Left hook came in 30 seconds in. Patiently working the jab. Left hook is a danger zone as well with Berlanga. There it is. Goes to the body with a left hand. Did you see the legs right there buckle just for momentarily? Sierra was hurt from a shot. Knockout sensation from New York. One of the emerging stars in the sport. One minute in. Nobody has got out of the first round. Average fight is a minute and 35 seconds. Sierra trying to stay in there tough. He told us yesterday, there is no doubt I'm not getting stopped. Thudding right hands, three straight right hands, doing damage, and he puts him down. Unbelievable. Berlanga does damage just like that. Seven, eight, nine. You want to fight? Give me a blow. Sierra is damaged. He has just under 90 seconds to keep the streak alive. Here comes Berlanga. Thudding right hand, combination punching, steps to him, wraps around with the right, trying to get rid of him, oh, puts him nearly through the ropes, that is a technical knockdown, the ropes held him up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, come here, you want to fight? Good. Can he get through 55 more seconds? Oh, wide sweeping right hand, well off the mark. He wanted the grand slam right there. Digs underneath, uppercut, right hand up top. Berlanga charging in again, looking to keep the streak alive. Go, stop! Let's go. Sierra just over half a minute to try to survive, to be the first one to get out of the first round against Berlanga. Berlanga stalking with that sweeping right hand. Now being patient for a moment. He's down again. It's over. It. He did it. The streak continues. 16 for 16. We got a star in Vegas blossoming in the sport, and his name is Edgar Berlanga. 16 and 0, 16 knockouts, taken out a guy who's never been stopped. How about it? Here's Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside MGM Grand, referee Russell Mora calls a stop to this bout at 2 minutes, 40 seconds of round number one. For your winner by technical knockout, 
El monstruo, Edgar, the chosen one, Berlanga. So if you're wondering what the all-time record is, if you're sitting back saying, who in the world has possibly started a career like this? This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds for the vacant WBO Intercontinental Lightweight title. Our judges at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Max DeLuca, and Patricia Morse-Jarman. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Celestino Ruiz. Introducing first out of the blue corner, presented in association with Taken Promotions. He weighed in at 135 pounds, wearing black trunks with gold trim. He brings a record of 18 wins, only one defeat, 12 wins coming by way of knockout from Osaka, Japan, Masayoshi Nakatani. Introducing out of the red corner, he weighed in at 135 pounds, wearing blue trunks with pink and black trim. He brings a record of 27 wins, only one defeat, 17 victories coming by way of knockout. He is a 2012 Olympian from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Felix El Diamante Verdejo.
but at the end of the day, it's about somebody holding you accountable and rising up to a standard of discipline and maturity. That's what it's all about, Stop. you know. But I always tell, you know, young fighters that they got to go through some things in order to get themselves ready for what God has them in store to be. Verdejo has very, very talented. He's an Olympian. He has punching power. He, you know, many people thought he was going to be the next Tito Trinidad. But he had a downfall. And I believe that downfall has made it. It was right here July 16th watch in this head, ring in the fanless atmosphere of the COVID-safe MGM Grand Bubble. And he was absolutely explosive with his power. TKOing the previously undefeated Will Madera. And that really... It really put a stamp on the way we were thinking things were trending with him. Because he did it with ease. He seemed to be poised. He seemed to be within himself. And when he had his opponent hurt, he finished him and got him out of there and didn't waste any time. Oh, right there. What a huge right hand from Felix Three, Verdejo four, from long five, range. Six, seven, eight. You okay? We were just saying the first it? round explosive <laughs> power he showed us. Let's see if he jumps watch on him. Head, oh, sweeping shots. Verdejo on the attack, standing right in the pocket. Nakatani swinging with him. Left hook comes in from Verdejo. That right hand just missed. Just missed Nakatani's chin. Nakatani is right there in the pocket against him and jabbing back now. He was just floored moments ago. That's Nakatani's game. And that's a fighter mentality. Nakatani got a lot of heart. You know, he's very courageous in the ring. He showed that versus Lopez. I knew he was going to come out. He took that punch well. That just shows you that he's in very good conditioning. Verdejo's doing the right thing right now. He landed a big shot. He tested Nakatani to see if he was ready to go. He wasn't, Ooh. and he's going back to boxing right now. Good move for Verdejo. Nakatani's landing right hand right over the top on the, the left side of Verdejo. I don't like that shot. It's landing... High on the head. If he just gets it down on the chin, he can hurt Verdejo. So Verdejo settling back down to box Nakatani after Nakatani gets up off the canvas and gets back to it. He comes with a one-two combination. The contender from Japan. Now he digs to the body with a left hand. So a nice bounce back from Nakatani after that huge right hand. We will show it to you right after this short break. He finishes with a left hook. He got up, recovered, and actually tried to finish the round strong. And the mistake that Nakatani made was he stepped straight back, had his hands wide open, created a lane for that right hand of Verdejo. You the back first rounds we just saw? <laughs> the improvement I'm seeing in Verdejo is not just a big right hand that knocks Nakatani down, but everything he's doing in between his combinations. He's poised. You can tell he's thinking right now. And then all of a sudden he'll explode or he'll hit it, throw a jab to the belly or set things up. You know, his, his in-between game, in-between punching, that's what's improved the most for me. Joe, you mentioned before the transition with Verdejo brought about by Ismael Salas. That knockdown was exactly how Salas stop, teaches stop. it. Perfect body Come mechanics, on, on. full extension. Salas is a master teacher. He's had success in straightening out other top performers from amateur careers. Robesi Ramirez, the two-time gold medalist. Rodejo had long been trained by Ricky Marquez, but this has been a successful transition in his professional career. Bernardo. Ismael Salas was very happy about the way he used that right hand to drop Nakatani, but he said it's still part of the learning process. He got a little bit too excited. He smothered himself. I said, create some space so that you can set the shots up again and drop them. 
Yeah, it creates some space, absolutely. And don't get reckless, especially when you have a dangerous guy like Nakatani that has power in his right hand. You want to set your offense up, even when you get a man hurt. You know, a hurt fighter is a deadly fighter. Yeah, I think he did. I, th I You know, I, I mean, how am I going to argue against the coach? But I thought he was Stop. very, very Stop. poised. He tested Nakatani. Nakatani was still strong. He backed up and went back to boxing. That's the kind of patience and poise you're going to need fighting tough 12-round championship fights. Stop! Stop! Hey, watch behind the head, okay? So Hostino Ruiz, third man inside the ropes with the warning to Nakatani as we come to the end of round number two. Top-ranked boxing on ESPN Live from Vegas. Stick around. Glad you're with us for an exciting night of top-ranked boxing here on ESPN. Oh. Right hand comes in to start the third round as Verdejo does damage early against Nakatani here. Remember, he floored him with a right hand in round number one. And Dre, just in that last round, we saw him utilize the double left hand. Let's take a peek back. Oh, another big right hand sweeps in. Can't keep taking them right hands. I'm going to say that. And the left hook is clicking, the jab is clicking, but that right hand is a major problem right now for Nakatani. He can't take too many of those shots right on the button like that. The one downfall that I see Verdejo, the mistake that he's making is, is that he's getting a little bit too greedy with the head shots. You know, he's able to hit Nakatani with power shots, and that's his focus. He's not focusing down on the body. Look at that slender body that Nakatani has. Long torso. That's how you break this guy down. You hit him with your best shot up top. If he stays there, then go down to the body. Everyone hates it down to the body. The downfall of Nakatani is he is tough, he is durable, but he makes no adjustments. His chin, his head is in the same position that it was in the first round when he got hit with the first big right hand. And if he doesn't make some adjustments, he's going to get cracked again. Yeah, technically, he's flawed. You know, definitely, you know, he pulls his, pulls, comes back with his hands down, shoots his jab sometimes from his waist, doesn't bring his hand back. Technically, he's not that great. And Verdejo's landing flush right hands. It's the kind of right hand that if it hits Nakatani in the right spot, it can turn them lights out. There's a lead left hook. Tried to come back with the right hand. Nakatani able to slip away. His first fight, Nakatani, in 17 months. Remember, the one fight in 2019 was against the current undisputed lightweight champion, Teofimo Lopez. He pushed the current champ on that night. First time that Teofimo went the 12-round distance. Nakatani is not getting as aggressive as we, we typically see him. You know, Verdejo is countering him very well. He's countering on both sides. He's stepping and slipping inside his jab and going down to the body and coming with left hooks. And then he... Stop. Round number four here in Vegas. The story early on has been the right hand of Felix Verdejo. Verdejo. You'll notice the 10-8 round on Andre's card. Of course, the knockdown scored in round number one. Felix Verdejo, who was the blue chipper, was the five-star prospect in the sport, the 2012 Olympian. He was thought of as the next great Puerto Rican fighter. And then the motorcycle accident, the TKO loss at MSG. But he is so focused, so determined, new trainer, new attitude. And coming out here to Vegas, to get in his training and to get in high quality sparring. Yeah, it's called sacrifice. Young fighters out there, you will not and cannot get to the top and stay there. Oh! There it is. There it is. Nakatani Four. was coming in. Five. Verdejo Six. met him Seven. with power again. Hey, you okay? Walk to me. Here comes the same Five. shot. And still the whole back half of this fourth round to deal with it. Verdejo brings that left hook behind that right hand. It's really going to be trouble. 
Two Nakatani. knockdowns scored now for Felix. You know, Nakatani, you see the way his hands are placed. He shoots his jab from that position. He doesn't bring the jab back to his to his face to block the right hand of Verdejo. But to my earlier point, Joe, talking about sacrifice, he left his comfort zone on the island of Puerto Rico, and he came out here, made himself uncomfortable because he's trying to rebuild his career, get to a championship, and he wants to be one of the greatest Puerto Rican fighters that have ever faster than what he thought. We're going to take a short break, and then when we come back, we will show you that knockdown he just scored. Who went the distance with the current undisputed champion, Tiafimo Lopez. Has never been knocked down in his career until tonight. We are starting round five. Understand how this man keeps continuously getting up from taking those type of punches. Unreal. 31-year-old from Osaka, Japan. His father's an auto mechanic, had a brother who fought in the amateurs. He started boxing at 15 years old because he went to high school with the former world champion, Kazaoka. Had 65 amateur fights, came to the U.S. for his U.S. debut against Lopez, made a name for himself a bit, 17-month layoff, and then runs into this buzzsaw. Stop! See, when you have a thinking fighter like Verdejo, you don't want to give him time and let him just think and let him be calculated and think about his attack. You got to stay on to create opportunities for themselves and for the offense. That's the problem that Nakatani's making right now. He's going to have to sell out sooner or later, Dre. He's showing Verdejo a lot of respect right now. We didn't... We didn't Ooh. see Nakatani. That right hand hurt Verdejo. Shotel, this kind of respect, but he's showing it to Verdejo tonight. Nakatani told us the other day he would get rid of Verdejo in the fifth round. See, Nakatani's finding a home for the right hand. Verdejo's dropping his left hand and pulling straight back. Nakatani gets stands with his right hand, and he's catching him. He heard him about 10 seconds ago. Just buzzed him. One thing that Verdejo is doing is he's loading up with these punches. You know, they don't they don't look natural. You know, when he threw, when he shot that left hook and he missed badly because he's loading up for these shots. He just needs to let these shots go. Don't load up with them. He loaded up right there. Like there, you see it. He's a big I mean, miss right there. Like, that you takes a lot of energy out of you when you miss a big shot like that. That's an interesting point of analysis because. I think most laymen from the sport wouldn't think of that. We'll touch on that a little more when we come back. <laughs> Felix Verdejo, who has already scored two knockdowns, and Masayoshi Nakatani. You talk about 2021, boy, we got a glimpse of things today. Anthony Joshua with a knockout win against Pulev over in the UK today in the heavyweight division. He's the unified champion, of course, the number one heavyweight in the world, the WBC and lineal champion, Tyson Fury. And deal parameters were already talked about for those two to have two mega fights come the new year. And there's a lot of chatter online already about negotiations commencing and getting those deals done starting Monday. You know, to me, uh, Verdejo is trying to hit hard. So, you know, when he's hitting Nakatani, stop, stop. it's almost like he's pushing. He's pushing with his punches. You know, he needs to, he just needs to let these punches go. Let them be natural, smooth. Dre, you made the point at the end of the last round about when you swing for the fences and you miss, it takes something out of you. Yeah, it's always been like that. You know, it's, it's also mentally discouraging. You know, it takes less energy and you feel a lot better when you land the shot, but... To Tim's point, when you're facing a guy in Nakatani who takes a good shot, who has a granite chin the way that he does, you can't hit him with shots that he sees because nine times out of ten he's going to take it away. you got to hit him with the sharp shot that he doesn't see. 
I had input from both corners, and thanks to Nobu Ikushima, who's translating for Nakatani's corner, he said, look, he's seeing the punches now. They're timing him, and I think you can get him in this round. That's the instructions they're giving to Nakatani. On the other side, Ismael Salas told me, look, I've told him to be patient. We're winning the rounds, and that's the most important thing, because Nakatani, I've known him since he was a kid, he can take a punch. Now, obviously, he's been down several times and got up, and he's still in the fight right now, and still coming forward. Two things Verdejo has to do. Pick up his jab. He said he's got a good jab working, but he needs to get more busier with it to blind Nakatani. And once again, stop loading up with the right hand. Just shoot it. If you're naturally a hard puncher, you don't have to throw hard to land hard. If I'm in Nakatani's corner, I'm telling him to let the one-two go. One-two, straight down the middle. One-two, he can't handle it. One-two. Good jab right there from Dale. Third lost. The prize of the bubble. The guy who fought often during 2020 <laughs> became a cult hero. He took a loss tonight. Head over to ESPN Plus. You can watch back all of the fights from here in Vegas at any point. And of course, there will be all the highlights of Edgar Perlanga and the 16 straight first round knockouts. What a way to start the night. Round number seven scheduled for 10 here. Verdejo has been in control since the start. Scored the knockdown in round one, scored the knockdown in round four. Nakatani has the work rate, Verdejo more efficient and has the power punches that have done the damage. You see every now and again Verdejo abandon his jab and just kind of leap in. That's like a mistake that he makes sometimes when he gets over anxious. That kind of move is not going to work against a guy like Teofimo Lopez. He's going to time you and he's going to counter you. He has to keep working on that if he's successful tonight. He's getting away with doing that tonight, but that may not work against the next guy. There's a one-two with the right hand from Verdejo. And there's a one-two from Nakatani, and now Nakatani goes on an offensive stop, surge. Stop, stop, He's hurt. Stop, 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 stop. What I say to one-two? Best moment of the fight for Masayoshi Nakatani, and he's stepping to Verdejo. Verdejo stunned here by Nakatani in round seven. He's tying up. Pay attention. Getting stunned happens, but it's what you do after you get stunned. So I want to see if how Verdejo recovers and if he can stay composed. How about this from Nakatani? Floor twice had never been down. Verdejo in complete control, and now they're brawling. Wildly entertaining seventh round. Verdejo pops a jab. Nakatani still stalking. He did damage with that one-two. And now a short left hand. Stop, stop. You can see some redness around the right eye of Felix Verdejo. Verdejo's doing the right thing. When you get hurt, go back to the fundamentals. Left jab, hands up, move your legs so you can clear your hands. Yeah, he's doing the right thing. Stop. But at the same time, he can be doing a little bit more. He can tie up Nakatani. Stop that momentum. From coming forward stop him from being able to stem with his hands because if he don't he gonna get hit with shots or like that trying to wrap around that right hand is nakatani if you want to a turn of events here timmy what a turn big round for nakatani end of seven three more to go in our co-feature. Remember, Shakur Stevenson still to come in the main event, but this has been a good one with Verdejo seemingly in control, having hurt Nakatani in the early parts of this fight. Andre, just moments ago, Nakatani did the right thing. He held on, and the jab of Verdejo is what allowed him to survive that last round. Keeping Nakatani back just enough where he can clear his head. In that seventh round, Nakatani landed 16 of 43 power punches. Bernardo. His lead trainer, Ken Nishida, was very happy, according to Nobu. He says, look, you landed a very nice shot. I need you to continue to make a miss and then land with your left hand. On the other side, Ismael Salas, he was saying he's looking for one shot. 
that big power right hand, move the other way, use your angles, and blocks him. This is why as a fighter, no matter how much success you're having, you can't fall asleep in a boxing ring because one punch, as we know, can change everything. And at this point, Ferdejo has no more slip-ups in store. He's got to get it done tonight. The one-two is open all night, Dre. Open all night for Nakatani. You know, the mistake that Verdejo is making is, is that when the jab comes out, you see him squat, and he stays right there in range to be hit with the right hand. He needs to move his head off to the left, get, to get away from the right hand. He keeps his head right on the line when the jab comes. There it is again. Just missed. I, I don't think Verdejo's even all the way back from being stunned in the last round. If, if I'm in Nakatani's corner right now, I'm going to say, hey, you got him looking for the right hand? Now turn it up the middle. He's squatting down in front, use that jab, blind him, and then come right up the middle with the uppercut. He won't see it coming. He's hurt again. He is hurt again, Dre. You just oh, called it. Hurt. And then he turns the tables right back at Nakatani. Back and forth stop, they stop, go. Stop. Dre, you sensed it. Yeah. You just said that you felt Verdejo was still feeling the effects. He got stung. Then he punched back. Nakatani gets stung. Long jab to the body. There's that one-two, Timmy. Tess, I told you, this fight can boil down to how bad each of these guys want. And you can see that both guys want this fight really, really bad. And, you know, when you see Verdejo, you see he gets hit. You see how quickly he recovers? He's thinking about his daughter. He's thinking about everything that he has gone through. He's thinking about his past, and he don't want to go back there. He's fighting against his past right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is good stuff here in the co-feature. And we had a heavyweight championship fight over in the UK. At the end of the year, uh, the sides of the losing side will have 60 days uh, uh, to... Um, to call for uh, uh, an arbitration, but uh, if, if there is a fight, it almost certainly would be in the Middle East. Stop, fellas. stop, stop, stop. Suertalo, suertalo, suertalo. So that is the talk. An undisputed heavyweight championship fight in the Middle East stop, stop, between stop, stop, stop. Tyson hey, Fury hey, and hey, Anthony hey, Joshua Don't hit behind the head. come 2021. Guys, Verdejo. Look Verdejo right now. The biggest I've seen in some time from him. Five minutes in total remaining in this fight. A fight in which Verdejo scored two knockdowns in the first four rounds. But then in the seventh round, things changed. Nakatani with a one-two, with a thunderous right hand. And since then, Verdejo has been unstable, if not valiant, game, and fiery. They have traded, but Nakatani has gotten by far the best of it in the last three rounds. Oh, and he's hurt. He sends him back. Nakatani is damaged for Dejo, and he doesn't look good at all. Six, seven, eight. Get us a yeet. He's in bad shape. He is in real bad shape. Could it be a comeback win for Nakatani? He floors him. He did it. Masayoshi Nakatani up off the canvas twice to end it like that. What a fight. <laughs> to have the belief to dig in and withstand and then to come through in round seven, eight, and close the show in nine. Two times Nakatani was floored. Two times he responded. And then he just kept coming and coming until he came right through Felix Verdejo. What a performance on the back half of this fight by Nakatani. It's tough to see uh, Verdejo go out like this, but you got to tip, tip your hat to Nakatani. I mean, what is he built of? What is he made of? He, he's different. It's hard, baby. Um, it's not just heart, but just the ability to be able to take those kind of shots and not get discouraged and to keep pressing until something 
got through, and it was a right hand that hurt Verdejo. Verdejo never fully recovered, and Nakatani closed the show. Dre, you know how you withstand those shots? You say to yourself before you even get in the ring, whatever he hits me with, I don't care if I go down, I'm going to get up, and I'm going to get stronger. And that's what Nakatani did. And Verdejo's fatigue, throwing wild, wild looping shots. He missed a lot of big punches. Kind of gassed himself out, I would say. Let's go to ring announcer Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the MGM Grand, referee Celestino Ruiz calls a halt to this bout at 1 minute 45 seconds of round number 9, declaring your winner by technical knockout. And now, the WBO Intercontinental Lightweight Champion, Masayoshi Nakatani! Masayoshi Nakatani, who in the seventh round landed 16 power punches to turn things around. Punches. He was damaged. He got up twice, and then he over-delivered. Speaking of a guy who always over.